Welcome back to Rome. 5,000 Leeds fans have made the trip out today, and that's a real boost for, for the Leeds team, isn't it? Yeah, I know my four years of Leeds. What great fans these are. Um, they follow them through thick and thin over the years. It's great to see them doing so well. And they'll play a big part in tonight's game. Looking quite pensive, aren't they? They're looking quite pensively. Yeah, I mean, I saw the lads um, warming up before the game. They were laughing and joking. They seem quite relaxed. Obviously now, just before they go out the tunnel, the nerves just bite in, the butterflies start in the stomach. But I think they look quite confident. OK, they're all set. The teams are coming out on the pitch. Time to join our commentary team tonight. Joe Jordan and first Jonathan Pearce. Good evening from this famous old footballing coliseum in the eternal city where David O'Leary's young gladiators face something of a milestone match. When they were last year, 17 months ago, they were narrowly beaten. Tonight will be a measure how far they've come under David O'Leary. A massive test as they strive for their first European quarter-final since 1975 when they went on to the Champions Cup final defeat against Bayern. When David O'Leary was here last, he tossed a coin in the Trevi fountain. His luck turned. The Leeds board liked what they saw the team here. The job was given to the likeable Irishman. Those 5,000 fans, their biggest European following since that night in Paris, are here once again this evening. Back also for Leeds United, Gary Kelly, Eric Backer and Matthew Jones having missed Saturday's draw at Borough through suspension. 14 goal, Michael Bridges is fit again his first start in four. Danny Mills drops the bench along with Alan Smith. Jason Wilcox has a ban hanging over from Blackburn days. David Batty is still sidelined. Fabio Capello's Roma, such a magnificent manager in his time, of course. Quite first team sharp, and Capello fumes. And fumes. I thought he was going to give it a right. <laughs> it's not a happy man, is it? Turn them against Roma. Those fans. You see, you look at those scores. Main thing Roma did. Oh, was he making a back? He was. Says the referee. But I know what I saw when I saw an elbow. And I think he's lucky to get away with that saga. Free kick to Leeds United. His money man markers, I would say for his total career, but Jones at this moment in time has not been given that, that specific responsibility. And Totti is floating by pushing himself up into Haaland and then dropping into midfield. So he's creating space for himself. And we've seen so far in the first half what he can do if he does have space because his use of the ball, he has vision and he has the ability you know, to exploit that, and I think Leeds United have got to look at the danger and either put Jones on him or someone else because they can't allow it to continue because Totti, between now and the end of the game, will create an opening either for himself or his forwards. Those Leeds United fans, wholehearted in their support. It's not particularly cold and hard in there. Cheering the first of it decision that's gone their way in quite a while. to those fans as well in this crowd they have been loud and proud for Leeds United we are Leeds by the 5,000 Leeds fans for the decision by the French official from Nice Capello not amused night satisfied with the job at least half done and pleased to be down in one piece after Gales made it a dodgy landing. I'm just so delighted to land in that plane. That was never a landing, honestly. It had been a night to remember. I thought the lads were magnificent. I thought it was one of the best uh, performances in Europe for many a year. We we'll look forward to uh, the home leg next week. That they go into it on level terms is due in no small measure to goalkeeper Nigel Martin, though later he was characteristically modest. They were always going to put us under pressure and we, you know, we managed to, to ride out our luck, really. It was a pressure game, it was very hard and uh, we're delighted with the result. And it could have been even better. Early on, Eric Bacco was unlucky to see his header somehow blocked on the line by the legs of the Roma keeper. 
And later in the first half, Harry Kiel might have done better when put clean through on goal. But the 7,000 or so fans who made the trip believe they've now got the upper hand. Bring him back to Rome, innit? Bring him back to Wigan Glenn in a week's time. <laughs> Rome! And sort him out there. 2 0. I'm not even confident that I'm going to get a ticket yet, but he <laughs> says he's going to get me one. <laughs> yeah, I think they can do these at home. Progression to the next round is, uh, is almost certain. Magnificent performance by Leeds United! The players, though, know it's going to be tough, even on their own patch. They've got a lot of quality and we'll have to be watched in the, in the return leg. There were 11 heroes out there today and they're a very good side and uh, I think we've done very well. Yes, Peter Ridsdale, uh, Nigel Martin and David O'Leary doing the interviews there. Roma that he'd be happy if Leeds had lost 2-1. In the end, they kept it to 0-0. The Olympic Stadium was far from full, but the fantastic atmosphere and the pressure was certainly on the Roma manager to get a result. Leeds came so close to the dream start. Eirik Bakker headed the ball down and the goalkeeper made a fantastic save with his foot. Leeds' chances were few and far between. Nigel Martin was by far the busier goalkeeper. He was in superb form. This was the first of many great saves. After Bakker's initial header, the best chances fell to Harry Kuehl. Once in each half, he saw his shots whistle past the outside of the post. He wasn't far away with this chip either. But Leeds spent much of the game on the defensive. Nigel Martin was everywhere. In front of him, Alfie Holland had a good game at the centre of the three-man defence. But it was Martin who won the plaudits of the Roma manager. Well, it's, it's always nice to hear, but uh, you know, I suspect he was uh, costing me a bit as well. Got to be pleased with your performance and come in nil nil. Is it uh, nearly done? No, no, it's a long way from being done. I mean, they are a quality side, and uh, it's, it might even be harder at, uh, at Ellen Road because you know they'll they'll look to hit us on the break. So we've got to be very careful. Brilliant, a fantastic result for Leeds. All the team played well. I think Nigel Martin was outstanding tonight. I thought they were maybe slightly lucky to get away with the draw, but excellent performance, tremendous work in the midfield. A good result. Be difficult to score at home though. No, I was absolutely delighted, I thought. Leeds were great, they got a magnificent result. If they got a goal, that would have been out of this world, but they really put in a great performance against pure quality in Roma. It's all set up for a great night of European football at Ellen Road next Thursday. Should be joining us, welcome to Friday's Look North. A teenage Leeds United fan and his father are recovering after being stabbed before last night's UEFA Cup game in Rome. It's believed about six Leeds supporters were injured when they were attacked by a gang of rival fans. 5,000 people had travelled from West Yorkshire for the fourth round game. Police say that most Leeds fans were well behaved, but there were minor skirmishes before the match. Well, for the very latest, I'm joined now by our reporter Ian Dennis. Ian, what's the latest on this incident there? Well, I understand that the 15-year-old boy had uh, uh, stabbed in the right thigh and also the right arm. He was uh, kept in hospital overnight, but I understand that uh, he has uh, discharged himself. That is my belief anyway. And I have heard a story that it was against medical advice, but he wants to come home, um, obviously back to West Yorkshire after what I'm sure has been a distressing time for him. And generally, how did the Leeds fans behave last night? Well, there were, there were six charged but not held for fighting and there were three arrested for, for criminal damage and also for resisting arrest. But on the whole, uh, the 5,000 lead supporters were in high spirits. They were uh, boisterous. But I've got to say from a personal experience, both inside and outside the ground from what I saw, they were very, very well behaved and a uh, credit to the club. And finally, how good a result? Oh, it's an excellent result and it gives Leeds United every chance of uh, moving through to the quarterfinals and it certainly means that the return game next Thursday will be a very special night at Helen Road. Ian, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. A major drug addiction that two Leeds United fans, including a 15-year-old boy, are recovering after being stabbed during an outbreak of violence before their side's UEFA Cup tie against Rome. More than 300 fans were involved in running brawls in Rome city centre. Altogether, eight English fans suffered stab wounds. The night of violence spoilt what was otherwise a successful night on the pitch, as Paul Seagert now reports. For the vast majority of fans arriving at last night's game, it was a peaceful and enjoyable trip. But unlike last season, when there was no sign of trouble, this time, even before kick-off, violent battles had taken place in the centre of Rome. Around 25 Leeds fans clashing with 300 Italians. Eight supporters from England soaked in blood had to be treated in a Roman hospital after rival fans ran amok with knives. 
One fan was kept in overnight while a 15-year-old boy with three stab wounds and a fractured skull collapsed on board his flight home to Leeds after apparently discharging himself from hospital. His plane had to be diverted to Luton Airport where he received urgent medical treatment. We believe that uh, a number of fans that were on their way to the ground who would walk from the town centre uh, appear to have been attacked by uh, Roma fans. Uh, and one young man in particular has had his leg slashed with a knife, quite seriously. Many supporters arriving back at Leeds Bradford Airport say they saw no sign of trouble. I didn't see any trouble, I didn't see any animosity at all, but um, like I say, this lad was stabbed and that was first thing. Then I heard about more and more people getting uh, stabbed. We didn't see any provocation at all, did we really? It was, so it was pretty, there was every presence, but uh, we didn't see anything sort of out of order or anything like that at all. In six days' time, the two teams come here to Elland Road for the return leg. And although the club and police are keen to point out that the violence was caused by a mindless minority, security for that fixture is likely to be as tight as ever, with up to 5,000 Italian fans expected to make the trip. Yes, that's Paul down at Elland Road. Well, actually, our man uh, John Shires was in Rome. Uh, John, you were obviously there. What do you make of what happened? Well, let's get this into a little bit of perspective. There were an estimated 7,000 Leeds United fans out over in Rome. Yes, there were eight people stabbed, and uh, uh, but there were only three arrests, we're told, on the night of the game, a few more earlier on. So let's get in, into perspective. It wasn't a night of mayhem on the streets of Leeds. We were out uh, at midnight last night, and it was very, very quiet, uh, of Rome, rather. It was very, very quiet. Yeah, but I mean, eight stabbings sounds an awful lot when you're over here reading the newspapers and, and listening to such reports. Sure, very regrettable. But what it really proves, I think, as well, is that uh, football hooliganism isn't just a British disease. Remember, these fans were actually attacked by Italian fans out in Rome, and uh, some reports say that they were the, uh, they were just making their way quietly to the ground. We're not exactly sure what was happening there, but. Uh, it uh, proves that other countries have got their problems with football hooligans as well. Thanks, John. Leeds United play, but a 15-year-old supporter and his father never made it to the game after they were stabbed outside the Olympic Stadium. They were among six supporters who were attacked by AS Roma fans as they walked to the ground. Doctors say it could take six weeks for the teenager to recover from his injuries. John Hill reports. Around 5,500 Leeds United supporters made the trip to Italy. Most enjoyed a peaceful trip and a satisfactory 0-0 draw. But for a group of fans, last night's match was overshadowed by violence. Before the kick-off, a 15-year-old boy was stabbed in the thigh. His father was slashed across the right leg as he tried to protect him. Four other Leeds fans were attacked outside the ground and one man was lucky to escape unharmed when a flare pistol was fired at him. Well, we've seen kids at school, it's always in passages. We did seek weapons, but they had something around and just getting them on the road and driving and carrying on. A couple of um, fire bangers went off into the Leeds and they were throwing stuff over. I mean, they ripped uh, a Union Jack down and set fire to it. So, I mean, if, if we had done that, what would have happened then? Do you know what I mean? I think we would have been arrested on, and then you would have picked up the paper in the morning and seen Leeds fans riot again. Italian police in full riot gear separated the rival supporters, but there have been complaints that they themselves were heavy-handed in their dealings with the visiting Yorkshire fans. It's a different style of policing, I think, uh, and I think sometimes it's the communication issue that the, the police are unable to actually get the fans to, to do what they wish them to do, but uh, there were certainly a number of complaints yesterday. Eight United fans were charged with public order or drug offences, but were later released. The authorities are now hoping that these isolated but serious incidents don't sour the atmosphere for Roma's return visit to Elland Road next week. John Hill, Look North.